Welcome to Mr. Miller's cooking class. Now, it's pie day, and I'm not going to make pie, but I'm going to make pizza pie. We're going to start with some warm water. Right here, we want it about 115 degrees. We're going to start with the dough. To make dough, you need something to make it rise, and we got some yeast right here. And we also need something to yeast, the yeast to eat, and we got some sugar. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take one teaspoon of brown sugar. Or so that's one tablespoon, I'm sorry. We're going to add that to there. We're going to mix it around. Make sure it gets incorporated. And we're looking for a temperature about 115 degrees. The reason we're going to warm up the yeast is it helps the yeast start to multiply. And that way when we build our dough, they'll start to increase and they'll start building their wonderful gases that they provide to rise the dough. We're just going to put the yeast on top of the water. We, we want to put the yeast on top of the water so the water weight doesn't kill our yeast. Now we're going to swirl that around a little bit and as what they call it, we're going to let that bloom. Let those yeast come on. Alright, now we're going to start with our bread. I'm going to take one cup of bread flour that's just higher in protein, and protein is the gluten that makes everything come together so that when those yeasts start to perform gas, it makes the bread rise. And we need salt. Salt makes flavor, it enacts with your um, taste buds so that you actually taste what you're eating. Electric, electric current. So it actually tastes good. Now you don't want too much salt, just enough, so we're going to do one teaspoon of salt. Now if you want to use sea salt or kosher salt, you can. Alright. Now we're going to get some large spoon. We're going to mix this around. Just incorporate the salt inside the flour. Alright, now what we're going to do is while this is resting, we're going to add one more thing of sugar. We don't want this dough too sweet, but we want a little sweetness to it. So we're going to do one tablespoon of white sugar. We're going to add that to the dough. You don't want to add it to the yeast mixture because you don't want too much sugar. For the yeast, you want just enough for them to start taking in to produce carbon dioxide. We're going to mix that around. Now, we're going to take our yeast, and now it's kind of bubbled a little bit. We're going to put it in here, and we're going to mix vigorously. For those of you guys who don't know what vigorous means, it means very fast and hard and quick. The reason we want to do this is gluten is the structure. Just like your house is made with bricks and wood and concrete that performs the structure so that you can put things inside your house. Without those things you can lay your drywall and other things on top of the house and the roof and so forth. So we're going to mix this very well, very, very well. You want just enough liquid so that we can start to create a glob. You see how it globs together? That's the gluten coming together forming those strands that we're going to need to make a really good dough. So once we get a good mix in here, if you want to use a bread mixer you can. This is such a small recipe I don't. If I'm making a large amount I will. Now we're going to add some more flour. We're not going to add it all at once. We're just a little bit of time. And we're going to keep mixing this in. Just a little, don't go crazy at first. You get five Oh, you get flour all over your face. Unless you want flour all over your face. We're going to mix vigorously again. So now we're getting nice and sticky. Let's come together. Okay, I'm going to add, I like a little bit of whole wheat flour to mine. You don't have to. It provides a little bit more flavor. Not a bunch, just a little bit. 
into there. I'm going to stir that in. I also like flax seeds. Flax seeds have a very nutty flavor. And provide a kind of provide a contrast to all the cheese, the sauce, and all everything that we're going to put on this pizza. So we're just going to do a tablespoon of that. And one more time, we're going to make vig mix vigorously. Okay, we're going to keep adding flour until we've got a dough that we'll be able to handle. And that's when we start the kneading process. You can see it start to come together where it's almost forming a ball. It's still a little sticky because it's sticking to the sides of the bowl, so we're going to add a little bit more flour and hopefully this will be just enough to get it onto the counter to start kneading. Now it's nice, nice good ball. We're going to get all the stuff on the sides, I'm trying to get not waste anything that we've got. We're going to place that on the counter. Now kneading is a necessary part. You're going to need flour, and I use some olive oil, not only to help keep my hands clean of the sticky mess that the dough is. But you also need a little bit of oil in this so that when it cooks, it doesn't dry out. Okay, what we're going to do to do a good knead, we're going to put some flour on the bottom. That way it doesn't stick to the counter. Flour our hands. We're going to push with our palms against the dough and go in a motion, switching one hand to the other. And we're going to keep adding flour until it's not too sticky, but it's nice and elastic. Now you're surprised, this process actually doesn't take that long. So when you guys think that you need to